friends and welcome back to Stronger Every Day. My name is Chrissy. It is so good to see you all. Thank you for joining me. If this is your first time, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, where is God when? That's what we're going to title today's message about. And I think we feel that a lot. <clears throat> Mental health issues or not, there's often times where we wonder where is God, right? Where is God when a situation happens in our life? Friends, he is never not with us. This world that we live in is broken, right? We live in a broken world. God does not have us here as little puppets, so he can't make us um, behave a certain way. He can handle some situations, but, you know, He's not a, a dictator sitting up in heaven and telling us how to act and how to behave. We ruined this world in Genesis, right? We didn't even make it out of the first book of the Bible before we introduced sin into our life. And so because of that, because of that happening, and I'm talking about the Adam and Eve and the apple and the devil, because of that happening... This world is a broken world. We have people that have free will. They do what they want. We have people that, even in even in those times, didn't believe in God. Didn't believe, you know, they don't believe in Him now. I mean, it's just, it's it's a broken world. We live in a broken world. But if you are a child of God, God is always with you. He's never not with you. I want to use an example. In Genesis. So, Joseph's brothers are jealous of him and sold him, right? God never left Joseph's side. Never once. Not once did he leave his side. He was thrown into jail. Joseph remained uh, faithful and trusted God to deliver him the entire time. And, it, and he became second in command at the time. He protected Egypt from famine and... He also helped his same brothers that were jealous and hated him and sold him. He protected them in that time of famine too. So just the redemptive quality and just that story alone. God never left Joseph. Were things done to him that were unfair? Of course, right? Um, situations happened. People, people reacted certain ways. People's... Um, pride and their their flesh made them do certain things but God never left Joseph's side situations happened that weren't fair to him God was always with him and I think that's important for us to understand do I always feel God with me no however I know he's always there and I've used this very basic analogy I don't always feel my ears I don't always feel my lungs I don't always feel my heart I don't feel my knee caps, right? But I know they're there and doing what they're supposed to do. Now, sometimes, depending on if you have arthritis or not, or heart problems or whatever, you get my drift, though, right? I don't know. I don't feel my ears, but I know they're there working. I don't feel my lungs, but I know that they're in there going up and down, keeping me breathing, right? God's always with us, regardless if we feel Him or not. I'm. I've talked in detail that some of the times that I felt God the most and just felt Him right there with me was when I was in the depths of depression and anxiety and in, in that pit struggling because He was literally wrapped around me carrying me. You know, I mean, just holding me in His arms and protecting me. And He's never not been there. He's always with us. God loves us. Again, I've talked about the fact we have free will. God does not dictate. He's not sitting up there pulling little puppet strings making us do things we live in a broken world we broke it in genesis and now we're we're living the consequences of that right there's there's sin and consequence there's um there's a consequence for sin and and we're living in that right um like i said we didn't even make it out of genesis before before we broke you know god's perfect will for us and so you know, I know for certain that it's, you know, there's a lot of times that you're, that bad things are happening, um, you know, horrible things that are happening. And, and, and our instinct is to thank God, where are you? He's right there with you. I know 
I heard someone talk about a story about a gentleman that had lost his son and um, he had prayed about it and said, you know, he was angry. He said, God, where were you when my son was murdered? Where were you at when he, when this, this happened to him? Where were you, God? And God said, I was in the exact same place I was when I watched my son, when I watched it happen to my son. You know, he's not, he's not oblivious. He knows exactly what we're going through. Um, when we get to heaven, we'll get, we'll be in that perfect world. But until we get there, there's trials and tribulations. We are told, we are told that as Christians, you will have trials and tribulations, but fear not, God has overcome the world, right? Bad things happen. You know, I don't understand why murders happen. I don't understand why sex trafficking happens. I don't understand why abuse of anyone happens. Babies, elderly, women, men. I don't understand that. I can't comprehend that. Animals. I don't understand that. I can't comprehend abusing an animal. I don't understand molestation. I don't understand rape. I don't understand incest. I don't understand why these things happen. I don't understand why disease happens. I don't understand totally really and, and still to this day don't why any illness happens. Mental illness being the one that we deal with. Um, I don't understand that. Now I do understand more now why that's happened to me and while I've dealt with it for the past 28 plus years because God wanted me to help others. And it's not that he gave it to me, right? It's not that God gave me mental illness so that um, I could live like this for, for 28 years, but it is a result of things that have happened and it's a result of, there's a, a whole thing of, of what can potentially cause mental illness. And um, they still don't know the exact cause of any mental illness, but there's a lot of possibilities out there. And whatever those happen to be has, has given me this cross to bear and carry. And, you know, I consider myself blessed that a year and a half ago, he said, I want you to help others. You know, I, I was in the floor crying and he said, I want you to help others. I, I want you to take what's happened and turn your pain into purpose. And that's huge because he didn't have to tell me that. I could have went my whole life not knowing. That's huge that he, that he first and foremost chose me, <laughs> right? And then that he let me know, you know, what my, what my purpose was and that, you know, the ability to go help others. And it's hard, friends. It's hard talking, being this open and raw and vulnerable with you guys and telling you that I've struggled with suicide. I've attempted suicide multiple times. That I've struggled with depression, major depression disorder and anxiety for over 28 and a half years. That I'm not perfect. I'm not happy-go-lucky 24-7. I'm not um, a bubble of joy every day. You know, that I'm me. I'm, I'm the best version of me I can be. And, and on, on the daily basis, I would say I, 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 let, I, I let either myself or, or, or someone or, or I still have it in my mind that I, I let God down. And I'm, I'm working on that. That, you know, God loves me because God is love. There's nothing that I can do today that's going to earn any more love than I've had the entire time I've been with God. Like there's 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 nothing that I can do that's going to earn that or make right wrongs that I've done in the past. God loves me because he is love. One of the points I wanted to bring out is is that God never abandons us. He would never stop loving us. He can't because God is love. The sea, the ocean, is the sea, right? It just is. It is the sea. It's the ocean, right? The sky is the sky. It just is. That's how it is. The ground is the ground. That's just how it is. God is love. That's just how it is, right? There's there's things that are not going to change. Um, I, I end all of my videos and I, I say the same thing every video. It's it's always my heart and hope that people understand and feel this. And it's like, I say, God loves you. I love you. Your family loves you. Your friends love you. And we need you here. Um, do I mean that every single person loves you? No. I know that God loves you. That I love you. Right? I know that at least somebody in your family loves you. And that some, some of your friends love you. I think we get to a point where we feel like we're unlovable and no one loves us. How could they love us? 
you know i'm not saying that because i had a question about this is why i'm bringing this up you know someone who's abusing you right whether it's physically mentally emotionally um that's not love right that's that's um not what i'm talking about here what i'm talking about is that because of the fact that you struggle with any of the mental illnesses out there that doesn't mean that you're not worthy of love from god first and foremost right uh i love you there's somebody in your family who truly loves you whether they have a hard time showing it or not and i've talked in detail about not in detail i filmed the video and then i didn't like I didn't like it, so I, I'm, I'm going to refilm it at a later time. But I've talked in detail about my mom. Um, we had a bad relationship. We struggled a lot. She struggled with mental health, and at the time, we didn't know it until I was already out of the up of the home. But she loved us. She loved me, my brother, and my dad with every ounce that she had to give. She gave every ounce of the love she had. Was that the love we needed or was that enough? No. But that doesn't mean that she didn't love us. She loved us to her ability, right? Everybody can't live up to the ability that you, that you need or that you deserve or that you demand or that you want. Sometimes you have to understand People are imperfect and the love that you're needing is not the love they can provide. That only comes from God. The love that you're that we are needing only comes from God, friends. And and I've said this before, you know, she I fully believe that my mom loved us with everything she had, but there was a lot of lack there. There was a lot of things that we didn't understand that she was dealing with. And and back then, mental you think mental health um, awareness is bad now back then it was even worse um we've come a long way since then but we're still a long ways off but you know it, it's learning right that that god is love he can't change that he is love you know it, it's a it's a very basic understanding of things i think I think what happens sometimes is we get so focused on life, right? We get so focused on work, on school, on chores, on events, on hobbies, on extracurricular activities, on, you know, if, if your kid's in sports or in band or in um, 4-H or in FFA or, or whatever whatever it looks like, right? If, if you're in, you know, we've talked that Nick volunteers for two agencies outside of working a full-time job. I volunteer for one. Um, we have a decent-sized family. We have a lot going on. I think we get so focused on everything that's going on in life, we take our focus off God, and then we don't feel Him, and we wonder where He is. Well, We've taken our focus off of him, right? And so it's not that God's removing himself from you. He's always with you, right? The, the Holy Spirit's in you. God is always with you. But we've taken our focus off him. And so we don't feel him anymore. You don't have to feel God to know that he's with you. Day in, day out, and always. God is always with you, right? So I wanted to read Psalms 55, 22. It's give your burden to the Lord and he will take care of them and the, the emphasis in his timing right so we want it quick fast and in a hurry right we wanted it done yesterday when we asked for it or when, when we wanted it or when we needed it it's going to be in god's timing but give your burdens to the lord and god will take care of them let me give an example so when we were building our chicken coop and run right it's 8 by 16 and then 8 by 16. So the, the run is 8 by 16. The coop is 8 by 16. During the day, if if we're home, the girls are free ranging. So they're in the, the one of the two goat pastures with the goats. But I had it, I had envisioned. We, we, we looked at plans. We studied plans. We looked at different ways to do things. And I, that project drug on and on and on and on it took us about probably 50 to 60 hours to get that project complete we built it obviously from the ground up we built it ourselves we dug out a foot under the coop and put hardware mesh which if you're not familiar with any of this the coop is just basically ours is basically a box it's, it's a big box but it's a box and then you try to predator proof it so we have it's it's like a tiny little mesh 
fence that we buried under the coop a foot foot down and then up just to kind of predator proof the girls because i don't want anything to happen and boys we have three roosters um because i don't want anything to happen to them and it took us forever but when we were done man do i love walking out and knowing that i feel safe and secure that we have done the best we can to predator proof our chicken that go area um and to see the finish to see the progress to see that the end result is amazing right did i love it because we built it in in june <laughs> it's hot in tennessee in june we built it in june and july um super hot in tennessee um like super hot and it you know 50 hours of, of out there building it and it was you know after work on the weekend you know all day saturday like 12 hour days trying to get it done because it was you know the girls needed it was about time for them to transition out so was i happy during the beginning of it no but i wanted it done quick fast in a hurry right but and i'm referencing this back when you give your burden to the Lord and that he handles it, you can look back and see that blessing of what it is. I go out there every single day and I smile, right? I love seeing my girls. I call them all girls. We have a boy goat and we have three roosters, but I still call them girls. Um, <clears throat> when we go out and I see the chickens and the goats just excited, they come running up. They're happy to see you. They're, you know, we're talking back and forth with each other. A lot of the chickens know their names. Um, yes, I name my chickens. They're all, uh, I had to put little bands on their their feet so that I could tell them apart because a lot of them look very similar. We have 17 Delaware chickens and so they all look very similar. And so it's it's hard to tell them apart without putting a little band on their legs so that I can tell who it is but a lot of them know their names it's just i look back at that project that i dreaded every day going out there to to get it done because it was it was hot right and exhausting it was hard labor work and that area where the chicken coop is is clay i mean it's red clay you dig about that far under the ground if you can see that about that far under the ground it's clay all clay and it's hard digging through some clay but we got it done and i walk out there every day and i love it it's it's i wanted the chicken coop i wanted the chickens and i wanted it done now you know but it took god's time for us to get it done and then i walk out and i get to enjoy that all the time so i hope that makes sense i hope my mind i don't know my mind sometimes is a little different i was talking to nick last night on the way home and he was talking about how my mind he's like i don't know that analytical is the right word but the way that you process things and you think our minds do that. Um, a lot of people that struggle with mental illness, you take a situation and you process that situation. You think about that situation. You that situation is on repeat in your mind, and you have 700 different possible outcomes of it that no one else has even thought about. <laughs> you know, that's how my mind works on pretty much everything. That's why sometimes it's hard doing this channel um, because sometimes you get comments that aren't. Um, now, I don't mind if, if there's a comment that you disagree with something I say. We're, we're human. We all have our own opinions. We don't have to have the same opinion for us to like each other and respect each other. But I'm talking about the um, more mean-spirited comments um, that don't really have anything to do with the channel or, or what the channel's about. Um, those are hard because... I can talk to people all day and have really good experiences talking to you all and just to be real honest that's that's a gift to talk to you guys but then it's that one comment that kind of rotates in my mind right and so that's just something i'm dealing with something i'm learning with um something I, that god's helping me through because the old chrissy would want to just throw in the towel and, and cry and withdraw and hide and that's not what i'm called to do so even if even if there's somebody that's not has doesn't have the best intentions that's between them and god because i know what god's called me to do so I hope that helps. I hope that makes sense. Um, we will see you guys in the next one. Again, it's every Monday and Thursday at 10 a.m. Central Time. 
uh, we're up to you know doing the two videos a week now and so we will see you guys in the next one friends i end every video this way god loves you i love you your family loves you your friends love you and we need you here we'll see you in the next one guys bye